12 MacBook Pro is still a good computer in 2019? Let's discuss. But first, I'm Scott with Techno Eclipse. If you want to support this channel and keep it sponsorship free, don't forget to support me in the Patreon link down below in the description. Also, there are Amazon affiliate links down there. If you buy stuff through Amazon and you click through those, sometimes I get money for it and sometimes I don't. So if you want to, that's also lovely as well. So Apple kind of cares about its Mac users again, and it's kind of exciting to see. And they've actually continued that with the support of an older and their formal, <laughs> their former glory in the 2012 MacBook Pro. So the 2012 MacBook Pro is obviously a hot button issue for a lot of consumers. I myself have made a video about it. I want to get this out now that I said, do not buy it. Do not buy the 2012 MacBook Pro. It is no longer the best laptop that you can buy used from Apple. My reason for saying do not buy it was strictly financially. Those 2012 MacBook Pros carry an extra cost to them because people know that those are the last fixable, easily fixable and upgradable MacBook Pros on the market today. Even though it's a seven year old computer, their price tag seems to be higher than the Retina version or even like a 2013 or and sometimes even 2014 MacBook Pros from what I've seen locally. Although recently, the 2012 MacBook Pro, the fixable ones, the non-retina ones, have actually gone down a lot in price. I'm not sure if it's just because people are realizing that they're super old computers or what, but that is a very, very good thing for consumers because Apple is supporting the 2012 MacBook Pro in macOS Catalina. So this is a very important issue because they're not supporting the 2012 Mac Pro in macOS Catalina. Now, to be fair, the x58 platforms that the 2012 2009 2010 mac pros were built on are is a very old platform that's again from 2009 maybe even older than that and the third gen i7 that's in the 2012 macbook pro is from 2012. so to be fair the 2012 mac pro i can understand why apple has not supported that mac pro as long as the 2012 macbook pro because the 2012 macbook pro is a true 2012 computer the 2012 Mac Pro is a 2009 computer running in 2012 and that you had to pay a bunch of money for. But that's neither here nor there. That's a cool computer. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the 2012 MacBook Pro. So should you buy it in 2019? Well, there are a lot of things that go into a 2012 MacBook Pro. But first, I want to start with all the negatives about it because people don't seem to ever talk about the negatives with the 2012 MacBook Pro because there are a lot. <laughs> to start the screen... It's a much lower resolution screen. It's a 1600 by 900 resolution. That's substantially lower than the 2800 by 1800 resolution you get on a Retina MacBook Pro. That's four times less pixels than you get on the Retina MacBook Pro. Now, there's a lot less pixels in it, which means there's going to be better battery life, but we'll get into that a little bit later. There's also a screen upgrade with the anti-glare and anti-coative resistant screen or whatever, which will increase the resolution, but it's just basically increasing it to a 1080p screen and still nowhere near the Retina display of some of the Retina MacBook Pros like the 2012, 2013, and so on and so forth that have come out, and they still use the same resolution, even the 2019 MacBook Pros, which is kind of interesting. Next is the fact that it's a much thicker machine. Now that's not necessarily a huge point for a lot of people. In my opinion, it's not the biggest negative, but it's something to notice. It's like not quite twice as thick as a Retina MacBook Pro, but it's a chunky little monkey you got there. I mean, the 2012 MacBook Pro at the time, well in 2009 when they came out with the unibody design, or 2008 when they came out with the unibody design, that was a beautiful laptop. Four years later, the design is looking a little bit old. And obviously, seven years later on top of that, it's still looking good, but it's a thicker laptop. Even some of the cheaper Windows laptops are thinner than the chunky old 2012 MacBook Pro. But that's not to say it's not a good buy. It is to say, though, that there are negatives with this computer. <laughs> Next is going to be raw performance. The dedicated graphics card that you'll get is a GT 650M. It's got one gigabyte of VRAM. It's essentially bad integrated graphics by 2019 standards. It's, it's essentially useless. I mean, it's there and obviously it's better than the integrated graphics that's in those machines, but you're not gonna be seeing huge performance gains if you are to switch to integrated graphics or dedicated graphics. 
it's an old machine, which also brings me to the point of the CPU. It's a third gen i7. Again, this is an older architecture, an older CPU. The battery life will be better because the screen resolution is a lot lower, but it'll probably be worse because those CPUs aren't quite as efficient as a newer CPU. But this is all kind of obvious stuff, but it is something to keep in mind. Although those 2012 MacBook Pros on Geekbench, which is more of a Mac benchmark, but when you compare it to like an i7 7700HQ in like a Dell XPS 15, they actually kind of score very similarly. So you can sort of blame Intel for that. Apple can't really take much of the blame because Intel only advanced their chips so much over so long. So the 2012 MacBook Pro has older hardware, a worse screen, it's a thicker machine, but there are a lot of positives with it. One of the positives is the fact that it's a thicker machine and what that allows you to do. You can put in two SSDs or two hard drives or one SSD and one hard drive, however you wanna do it. Although these are only going to be over SATA, so it's not gonna have the same speeds as one of the Retina MacBook Pros. But if you run them in RAID, an SSD in RAID, it'll actually probably be a little bit quicker than an SSD in some of the Retina MacBook Pros. It should be as quick as some of the Buy 2 PCIe SSDs that are in the MacBook Pros from 2012 up until 2014. And in 2015, they doubled the bandwidth, so they have Buy 4 PCIe SSDs inside of them, which make them a lot quicker. But you do get the upgrade ability where you can take out that CD slash DVD drive or you could keep your CD slash DVD drive and you can buy a physical version of the disc, which is a lot cheaper than buying the downloaded version. And you could save money there. It's penny pinching, but it's something to keep in mind. You don't have to bring around a CD player that you plug into the side of it or a DVD player that you plug into the side of your laptop. And what also brings with that is not necessarily better cooling, but it doesn't have the same failure rate as some of the other MacBook Pros from that area, the 2012s. 2011s, even some of the 2013s and 2014s have suffered from a failing GPU, but historically the mid-2012 thick boy, 20, <laughs> that's I hate that meme, I don't even know why I just used it, but the mid-2012 thicker MacBook Pro that everyone knows is like the 2012 MacBook Pro doesn't really suffer from that same fate because it has a better cooling potential and it's got better power delivery. I believe that's the reason why. And on the topic of power, the battery life is going to suck on a seven year old computer. But the good news is, is it's literally like two to three screws to pull that off and put in a new battery. And those batteries aren't that expensive anymore, maybe 30, 40, 50 bucks. And instead of having to unglue and rip out a battery from a Retina MacBook Pro that would take a lot more skill and effort, it's a lot easier to unscrew a couple of screws, pop that battery out, and then pop it back in. Next, let's talk about overall just upgradability. RAM's upgradable, SSD's upgradable, and the screen is upgradable. And you could technically upgrade that motherboard as well, although you could do this in a lot of different MacBook Pros but you could theoretically pull out that MacBook Pro motherboard and upgrade it with a better spec i7 and put that in there and then still have the same upgradability. I know it's kind of janky, but it's something you could do, although you could do that on pretty much every other MacBook Pro, although it's just a lot easier on that MacBook Pro. So there are a lot of pauses with the 2012. It's upgradable, easily fixable. If the RAM breaks, you don't have to go into Apple and pay them to replace the entire logic board because every computer after the 2012 MacBook Pro, the thicker one that we know, all the RAM is soldered and a lot of the SSDs are soldered since 2016. They're all soldered right to the motherboard. So reliability is definitely an issue with Apple laptops. They are historically more reliable from my experience, but if it breaks and you have that reliability failure, you're gonna be in a tough spot because it's a lot of money to replace an Apple MacBook Pro logic board or anything, really a screen. All that stuff is very, very expensive, but on these older computers, it's a lot cheaper. So it's a cool laptop to buy and the fact that Apple is supporting it in macOS Catalina is a big step in my opinion, but <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be supported for the next five years. But do keep in mind, it's getting support now in 2019. So typically Apple supports the software with security patches for two years after the release. So if you were to buy a 2012 MacBook Pro now, you would theoretically be getting around two to three years of support with security patches, which is really cool, which would mean that they support that laptop for essentially 10 years with security patches. I cannot imagine in 2020 they release the next update Mac OS mountain range area and that is going to be supporting the 2012. I just can't believe they do that. 
So it's pretty cool now that they are still supporting it. I think that they kind of know it's a very important laptop to a lot of people. And it's cool that they're still supporting it. So I'm proud of Apple. And I think it's definitely something that you should consider purchasing because I've used a 2012 MacBook Pro and I have one here. And it's an awesome, awesome machine. I mean, it's awesome. It's thicker, but the upgradability and the overall usability is really cool because a lot of the negatives, other than if you get it for way too much money, a lot of the negatives really don't count. A lower resolution screen on a screen that's this big isn't the biggest thing. In my opinion, I like a little bit higher resolution screen, but like it's not the end of the world if it's only 1400 by 800 as opposed to like 1650 by 1050, which I believe is the upgraded screen. So the 22 MacBook Pro, definitely something to consider purchasing in 2019 still. I can't believe I'm saying that after kind of ripping into it in one video but they are more expensive. So do make sure you're doing your homework and don't spend more money on 2012 MacBook Pro than you could buy like a 2014 MacBook Pro because the 2014 MacBook Pro is more powerful and not necessarily more reliable, but will get support for a lot longer. So those are my thoughts on the 2012 MacBook Pro in 2019. It, I can't believe they saved, like they, they still are giving it updates. I just assumed they wouldn't. I had sort of told a lot of people that in comments, they'd be like, well, you know, is the 2012 going to receive this next update? And I was like, well, I can't imagine it does. It's Apple. Like, why would they support a computer for that long? They never, ever do anything like that, ever. But they did this time, and I'm happy. I'm happy that the users with the 2012 MacBook Pro are going to be using it for another year, are going, to be, are going to be able to use it for another year and extend the life of that machine that has been such a workhorse for a lot of people. I know I've built a lot of really beautiful videos on this channel with the 2012 MacBook Pro. So thank you guys for watching the video. If you like the video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and scream at the top of your lungs. Like, I want your parents calling people because they're like, oh my gosh, little Jimmy's screaming. And so, all right. <laughs> all right, don't forget the Patreon link down below to help keep this channel sponsorship free. Although don't feel obligated to your watch time and your like, comment, subscribe, share, tweets all those just i mean i'm only asking a few things so just do it all right i'll see you guys see you in the next one peace out